brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. There's an interesting struggle going on in the church right now. On the one hand, you have the Synod on Synodality, promoted by Francis and his henchmen, which openly is pushing the envelope of heresy and sin being normalized in the church. And on the other, you have this push by the American bishops to try to refocus our Catholic lives on the Eucharist and to bring back actual Catholic teaching on the Eucharist. It's an interesting thing to watch, and aside from obvious liturgical battles going on in the church, there might be no better example of what the interior, interior battle for the soul of the Catholic Church looks like in our time. Two bishops have spoken on these topics recently to warn and assure the faithful of the state of things, and both of the statements made by these two bishops are worth examining in some detail because what we have in this battle is a dichotomy between one church that at least is identifiably Catholic in some aspects and the other church that is trying to be something else. And that church seems to be calling itself the Synodal Church. But let's get a closer look at this. Bishop Athanasius Schneider gave an interview recently to Gloria.tv in German. I told you yesterday about the Synod on Synodality and the German Synod being a vehicle for heresy and Rome wanting the Germans to work with Rome to achieve their goals. Bishop Schneider had some strong words for the whole mess in his recent interview. And they are watchwords for us all as the church goes further into this season of heresy and tribulation. With that in mind, headline from Gloria.tv. Schneider. The results of the Synod on Synodality are conceived in advance. Schneider is saying the same thing we've all been saying here. The Synod on Synodality was open with the outcome predetermined, with the process involving the laity being basically a show to make the laity feel listened to. But the end results of the Synod are already determined. The first draft of the document Francis will issue has likely been written already too, but... Let's take a look to see what good old Bishop Athanasius Schneider has to say to clarify things on this for us. Quote, Already at the 2014-2015 Family Synod, several bishops reported to him that their objections were not taken into account, and a Morseless Titia was the result of that synod, appeared conceived in advance. Schneider expects that the current synod will juxtapose ambiguous, wrong, and correct statements in order to reassure the conservatives. This is how Vatican II proceeded, as well as Amoris Laetitia. But with the current synod, it may be even worse. For Schneider, synodality is a trick and a cover to further dilute the faith of the church. It is wrong and a Protestant thing to put revealed truths of faith about matters of the flesh, of a certain sin that cries out to heaven for justice that James Martin is interested in, and women's ordination open for discussion. Thus, Schneider said, corresponds to a political parliament, but not to the truth of the faith. Schneider has learned from several countries that tallies in favor of the Roman Mass were received by the Synod, but excluded from the documents. He has no hope for a positive outcome because Francis has filled the Synod's leadership only with people who demand a whitewash of that sin that James Martin has a weird interest in. He names Cardinals Hollerich and Grish and the French nun Nat Natalie Bequar. Quoting Schneider, when these people sit at the helm of the Synod, you don't need to be particularly intelligent to see the results are already fixed from the outset, Schneider soberly observes. For him, insulting Catholics as quote-unquote ideologues by Francis is a misuse of the term, because the true ideologues are the leaders of the Synod, who set their opinions against the word of God and quote-unquote ruthlessly enforce them against Catholics. End quote. Schneider sounds like pretty much any of the traditionalist Catholic commentators you probably watch or listen to. We're all saying basically the same thing about this. Schneider's right. You don't have to possess a keen mind for political maneuvering or have special theological training to see that the modernists in Rome already have the end game planned for this so-called synod, that this whole thing is just a silly game and that it's a sham. Not only is it that, but it's like watching a slow rolling train wreck happen in front of our eyes because we already know what the end result of this is going to be. If you've been paying attention, then you'll know that this isn't really new either. As Bishop Schneider hints at, this has been happening for some time. He mentioned previous synods where the better bishops were simply not listened to. 
he said this with Amoris Laetitia, and it probably happened with the Pan-Amazon Synod as well. I mean, that was a huge synod with huge implications. But what we're seeing is the symptom of a larger affliction in the church. For decades, going back to Vatican II, the church has been engaged more and more with the secular world. The church has adopted much of the secular world's thinking. Its management style, its concerns about the world, and even Catholic versions of secular language. None of that is for the better either, since we frankly rarely hear about bringing souls to Christ, and we rarely see the church take a hard stand against wicked sins committed in the broader world. Bishop Schneider gets this and connects the present synod to the larger problem, that this is just a logical extension of Vatican II, and Francis himself has admitted that on several occasions, and he does so readily. Quoting the article again, The church has begun in the 1970s to adapt to the world, to see everything naturalistically without the supernatural view of the faith. Since then, this adaptation has become radicalized. One wants to transform the church into a human association, an NGO, a left-wing party that disregards the faith, and adapts to the fashions of the time, Schneider explains. He considers the synod a logical consequence of the parliamentary style introduced in the church. An excess of commissions, discussion groups, and meetings is indirectly proportional to the faith. Parallel to the flood of documents, in the last decades, foxes have been put in charge of the hen house. Already John Paul II, and unfortunately also Benedict XVI, have, quote, appointed obviously liberal, faithless clerics as bishops and cardinals. Schneider remarks, quote, What good is a beautiful document and a synod if these bishops and cardinals continue to corrode the faith in their sphere of influence? End quote. And here is where I object to what Schneider is saying. He uses the false left versus right dichotomy of the secular world to illustrate the problem in the church. That might be useful in secular politics, even though even there it's strained. The issue at hand in the church is that these are modernists, and they have two factions, at least among themselves, a conservative faction and a liberal faction. The former, meaning the conservative faction, is where we find Francis's predecessors, except Paul VI, and the latter is... Well, Paul VI, Francis, and the bishops who think like them, but they're all modernists to some degree. In Pascendi, Pius X stated that not all modernist prelates are full-blown heretics, but many of them are. We see that in the divide in the church today. But Schneider is, of course, shying away from using the term modernist very often to describe them because, frankly, modernism is a formally defined heresy, and full adoption of its ideas places you outside the church. Presumably, those who reject the hermeneutic of continuity for Francis's hermeneutic of a new ecclesiology brought forth at Vatican II are full adopters of modernism, and to state such things has some pretty heavy implications that the smarter bishops like Schneider simply don't want to make. If you want a stark picture painted for you, compare what the U.S. bishops are focusing on versus the synod on synodality. And I don't often say positive things about the U.S. bishops, but in this case, I'm going to. They are engaged in a Eucharistic revival right now. They want to address the problem of a lack of belief among the laity in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. I fear that they are going to force the real changes needed to bring belief back in the sacrament. Eliminate lay Eucharistic ministers. Eliminate communion in the hand. Bring back altar rails. Have Mass said ad orientum. And preach consistently about the Church's traditional teachings on the Eucharist, including not receiving the sacrament in a state of mortal sin and the need to go to confession on a very regular basis. But at least some of the bishops are talking about these issues, and it provides an interesting dichotomy when placed side by side with the heretical synod on synodality. Catholic News Agency had an interview with Archbishop Cordeleone of San Francisco recently on the subject, of course, of the Eucharistic revival, among other things. The bishops are planning processions in various dioceses of the Eucharist and more teaching on the Eucharist to be encouraged by priests on, at Sunday Mass. And that's all fine. Processions are a good thing, and they are sorely missed from our Catholic life because they've been so heavily de-emphasized in the past few decades. But we need more than that. And Archbishop Cordeleone actually recognizes this. In the interview, he's asked about how some Catholics believe we should only receive the Eucharist kneeling and on the tongue. And instead of dismissing that position as being too rigid, he actually seems receptive to it, to at least contemplate the underlying point. From that article, quote, I wonder the same thing. That's a good example of the casualness with which a lot of people treat the Eucharist. 
very easy to be casual when receiving in the hand. It's a lot more challenging to preserve reverence for the Eucharist when it's given in the hands. If we are going to do it, we have to be very intentional about it. When I was a pastor, I would regularly instruct people about how to receive communion properly. Actually, at Sunday Mass for the homily, I would demonstrate how to receive on the tongue as well as in the hand. I'd see it happen. And the priests on Monday would find hosts on the floor, under the pews, or in the pages of a missalette. So I had the ushers at communion station to make sure people did not walk off with the host. You know, Catholics used to have to fast from midnight the night before Mass and be on their knees and receive only on the tongue. We need to have some kind of practical measures in place, reminders to people of who they are receiving when they are receiving communion. Never has communion been treated so casually in any of the apostolic churches, in any of the Eastern Rites, or in the West. So this is a new thing we're trying to grapple with. End quote. Well, this new thing we're grappling with has been a problem for decades. I'm sure many of you can attest to that, but notice the dichotomy here. Coeur Leone is concerned with core basic matters of the faith, of what we profess we believe and how we live what we claim and profess to believe at the most very basic level possible. The Synod on Synodality is concerned essentially with material matters, with matters of the flesh and of worldly opinion and of a claim of the world. That is a stark contrast, one worth meditating on. At least some of the bishops are focusing on this issue, even if they're far from perfect. Archbishop Cordeleone turned some heads when he made some rather wishy-washy statements about the Moloch ritual and how he has frankly not enforced his edict against that high-profile Catholic politician who lives in his diocese whom he has barred from communion. I suspect he got a call from Rome telling him not to do that again, honestly, and now he's signaling all sorts of odd things on that topic in general. But regardless, he is still trying to recover that Catholic sense of the sacred with the Eucharist. All the apostates in Rome are pushing for the desecration of the Eucharist through sacrilegious reception of Holy Communion by those the Church would have never allowed to have received the sacrament in the past. It's where we are right now, folks, and it all kind of makes you wonder a little bit. But I am curious what you think about this, so let me know in the comments. Is Schneider right on his assessment of the Synod? Is it all predetermined? Is Corleone right? Is he right? And in his assessment of trying to restore the sense of sacredness to our reception of the Eucharist, does he seem open to bringing back a lot of those old standards we had? Or is he not going far enough? Let me know in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. Sharing this on social media helps enormously as well. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.